Greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's once again my pleasure and privilege to share the word with you. I want to talk about the subject of prayer today um, with whatever is happening around. It is so painful to see what's happening and uh, there are different responses that the body of Christ you know the way they respond is different different groups are reacting to this whole pandemic situation in different ways and I'm not here to um, say what is right and what is wrong uh, everybody is doing things from a heart of sincerity and with the light that they have and I appreciate that some have opened up their buildings to be the uh, centers yeah if the buildings are shut down and you cannot have services at least get handed over for such a time as this where people need beds and yeah that that's a better use of the building i would say so i really appreciate uh people who do that um then there are these groups who believe it is the sign of end times uh and they kind of resign from the whole thing saying oh anyway it's supposed to happen because we are living in end times uh but i also see that group who say that are the ones at times organizing prayer against it so i see it as a confusion um if it is end times and it has to happen then why pray about it just let things be as it is uh so if we are praying about it that means we we want god to do something about it uh and at the same time we somehow feel if we can rally more people and encourage them to pray for more hours then this will stop uh the reasoning being uh second chronicles 7:14 saying that if my people who are called by my name uh shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and repent and cry out to me then i will hear from heaven and uh heal the land so that's the verse that is used to cry out to god uh honestly think about this more than 100 days of protests are go- going on uh by the farmers in the north uh especially from punjab and the government is not budging but the protests still goes on somehow most of the prayers have such a thing where if we fast if we you know cry out enough then this god will do something about the situation uh for me that's very disturbing because i can't imagine a god who is not willing to act because there are not enough prayers coming up uh to him in such a situation are you guys understanding what i'm saying uh, nothing wrong in praying but i'm telling if there is this god sitting out there 
and thinking oh i want more people to pray more people to cry out to me uh, for more number of hours then only i will do something if our prayers are the ones that are motivating god to do something about the situation then ah uh, my goodness we all <laughs> need help uh having such a god personally i don't see that god as the father of jesus i believe that's the god of our imagination um who needs something from us to act for us yeah i don't find the father of jesus to be that transactional god uh that once the one that i once believed i have been part of prayer movements i have uh done f- multi days fasting rallying people crying out for revival so uh, i have done all those things myself uh but looking back i i was sincere but i was sincerely wrong that's what I, i can say all about myself um so there is this social service element okay yeah give the food arrange oxygen cylinders um give out the buildings give money feed the poor do whatever ngo can do yeah we should we do these things should we engage in such activities my goodness i would if you are going to ask me between the prayers that are going on should i spend time there or spend time here i would say partner with some good ngo and spend your time like that rather than crying out to the god of our imagination yeah so so i'm not against the social service please we are also doing do it by all means um what about prayer are we not supposed to pray if we um yes we are supposed to pray but what should be the posture of our prayer is so important um because mark chapter 4 he began to teach by the sea and a great multitude was gathered to him he got into a boat and sat it sat in it on the sea and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea then he taught them parables he taught them the parable of the sower um some fell on the roadway some fell in rocky places some fell in thorny places some fell in good land even that fell on good land had three levels of output 130 fold 60 fold and 100 fold okay after that verse 11 says to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of god but to those who are outside all things come in parables so that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them it's very interesting <laughs> the next verse says and he said to them do you not understand this parable okay i'll give you homework just go and underline the word understand that comes in the gospel of mark okay understand understanding anything like that okay um do you not understand this parable how then will you understand all the parables so jesus is giving us a key here if you don't understand the parable of the sower then you don't understand any other parable and all the parables or all kingdom truths are given in parables so all kingdom truths are given in parables and for you to understand all the parables you you should have the understanding of this one parable yeah then he explains to them the parable the sower sows the word and 
uh, all those things happen and he is giving parable after parable parable of the growing seed parable of the mustard seed uh, the light under the basket so verse 33 and with many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it but without a parable he did not speak to them and when they were alone he explained all things to his disciples on the same day on the same day when he taught all these parables on the same day when evening had come he said to them let us cross over to the other side and you know what happened great windstorm rose and verse 38 but he was in the stern asleep on a pillow and they woke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing do you not care that we are perishing then he arose rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm why are you so fearful but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So he taught them about kingdom parables. Okay, let us cross over to the other side. Storm is coming up and they're all crying out, crying out to Jesus. So there is this kind of prayer where we cry out to Jesus out of hopelessness and despair. Oh, and also with, with the belief that he doesn't care that we are perishing. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? That's how most of the prayer right now is. We believe God really don't care about what's happening. Okay, let people die like flies. All I care, who cares? And God is having his own jolly good party out there and uh, people are dying like flies. And so we are supposed to wake him up, wake him up out of his jolly good mood and say, hey, please do something. Don't you care that we are perishing? And we think just because we are crying out to Jesus, that is a prayer of faith. Just because we are beating our chest and crying out to God and we're getting together, we are gathering and saying, please, please, please. Because we're crying out to Jesus, we think that's a prayer of faith. But Jesus got up and said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So, yes, they cried out to Jesus, but they cried out out of fear. And they had no faith. So what kind of faith was Jesus looking for? At least a couple of possibilities are there. He was looking for the kind of faith where the disciples should have just slept with him at least. Uh, okay, Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. We are going to cross over to the other side no matter what. The faith that makes him sleep during the storm. Or the other option should be what Jesus did. He said, peace, be still. You guys should have dealt with a storm. Why are you waking me up? Listen to me carefully. The faith that Jesus is expecting from the disciples is a faith that would deal with the situation as he is dealing with. But faith is not something that we muster up. Faith is not a formula. Faith is not a principle. Faith is a product of relationship. Is faith is a product of knowing someone. When I know someone, automatically I have faith in him. When I don't know someone, I don't have faith in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? The more and more I know a person, to the extent I know, I have faith. I would have just met you in airport and said hi. And I don't know you 
that then I won't have faith in you. But a friend of mine whom I know for 20 years, I have, I know him, I know him. Automatic byproduct is faith. So faith is not a formula. Faith is not a principle. Faith is not something that you muster up on your own. I will have faith. No, you either know a person or you don't know a person. If you know a person, then you have, you have faith to the extent you know. And when you don't know a person, you don't have faith. It's as simple as that. You cannot <laughs> and make faith come out of you. So when Jesus is operating out of faith, he's not, a, not operating out of a principle. He's not operating out of a formula. He is flowing from that place of knowing the father. When he knows the father, he has faith. And when he has faith, he is able to deal with situations. So, when disciples are crying out, why, did, why have you forsaken? Please do something. That is because we do not know the Father nor Jesus. Neither did they know the heart of Jesus, nor they knew the heart of the Father. That's why they were crying out like that. But the Father is a good Father. He just woke up, dealt with the situation, and turned around to them and said, why are you so fearful? Why do you have no faith? How is it that you have no faith? Okay, keep all these things in mind. Then they come, so they come to the other side uh, of, uh, of the sea and then he is dealing with the demon possessed man and then they refuse and um, he c c crosses back and there is a multitude, you know, so he heals the, uh, what do you say, um, woman with the issue of blood, then he raises uh, Jairus' uh, daughter from the dead. He's doing all these things and uh, then he's rejected at Nazareth. And he's sending out the 12 because he is rejected. It's really amazing. Yeah. Because he's rejected, he, he's sending out the 12. And when the 12 goes around, a multitude starts following him. And that's where the feeding of the 5,000 happens. And he says, you give something to eat. And they are saying, my goodness, this is not going to happen. We have got just five loaves and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. And all these things happen. And immediately Jesus is asking them to go over on the other side again. Uh, and Jesus goes up the mountain to pray. Verse 49. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat to them and the wind ceased. Look, look, look. I want you not to miss this. The previous time they cried out. They were in the storm. They cried out. And Jesus woke up and rebuked the storm and then rebuked the disciples. Second time. They're going through a similar situation and their response hasn't changed. They're still crying out and Jesus is walking on the water and they see Jesus and they are all the more troubled thinking is a ghost. And now they're afraid of losing their lives with, in the storm. Now they're all the more afraid of a ghost coming and going to have, uh, you know, trouble them uh, in, in this. And so now can you imagine disciples crying like crazy and Jesus doesn't even come and deal with the storm this time he just says be of good cheer <laughs> can you imagine he's not dealing with the storm he's coming and saying hey guys be happy <laughs> these guys are bewildered and he's saying, be of good cheer, it's I. Do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat to them 
and the wind ceased. What kind of a man is this? He didn't even deal with the storm. He just looked at them and said, be of good cheer. Do not be afraid. It's I. And he went into the boat. The wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. He went up into the boat. The wind ceased all by itself. If you were in that boat and here comes a guy whom you were thinking is a ghost walking on the waters and you are bewildered, you are peeing in your pants and you're crying out your lungs and the ghost speaks to you and says, be of good cheer, it is I. And before even you have time to process, he walks, gets inside the boat and the moment he gets inside the boat, the winds cease. What would be your reaction? Our reaction would be the same as disciples. What was their reaction? They were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure. They were greatly amazed beyond measure and marveled. And you might be thinking, yeah, this is exactly how we would react. But the key word there is the word for. In verse 52, the, the next verse, the wind ceased, that's fine. But they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and they marveled for they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. This is the most strange verse that I've read in the Bible. For they have not understood about the loaves because their hearts were hardened. How did he begin the whole thing? A couple of days ago, he started with a parable. I want you to understand this parable. If you understand this parable, and he was talking about a hardened heart and how the word cannot penetrate and how you have to guard your heart and guard the word within the heart. And if you guard the word within the heart, then the word has the potential to give 30, 60 and 100 fold. And he says, if you understand this parable of how to, uh, how the kingdom operates as the word comes in and you guard your heart and when you guard your heart, how it automatically gives results, 30, 30 fold, 60 fold and 100 fold. When you understand this parable, then you understand all of the parables. Um, it, see, every parable starts small and grows big. Many people are thinking the kingdom of God will come with like that. Jesus said the kingdom of God will not come with observation. Uh, people say, here is the kingdom, there is the kingdom. And he says, don't, 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 don't go for such nonsense. Don't fall for such nonsense. The kingdom of God is within you. And it is within you as a seed form. The kingdom of God grows from within you. And when, it, when you learn to steward what you have got, and it increases and it multiplies and it manifests and it, it reaches out, it impacts. So many are thinking, oh, kingdom will come when Christ comes back. Mm, kingdom will come back uh, in second coming, then everything will be fine. But the kingdom is like the parable of the sower sowing the seed. The seed is the word of God, who is Christ. And he is within us. And the more and more we allow him to manifest, the more and more the kingdom manifests. And why we don't allow him to manifest is because we do not understand and our hearts are hardened. 
that's the whole problem of religion see uh, come with me to um, Mark chapter 3 verse 1 and he entered the synagogue again and a man was there who had a withered hand so they watched him closely whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so they so that they might accuse him and he said to the man who had the withered hand step forward and then he said to them is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil to save life or to kill but they kept silent when he looked around at them with anger being grieved by the hardness of their hearts see religion hardens our heart it blinds our eyes and from that hardness we do all funny things we might be crying out they great they were greatly amazed beyond measure marveled for they had not understood the loaves because their hearts were hardened how does me understanding the multiplication of loaves solve the problem of a tsunami or a storm it's not mechanical understanding it is not intellectual understanding the miracle happened in the hands of the disciples the miracle happened in the hands of the disciples the impossible happened in the hands of the disciples the multiplication of the bread happened in the hands of the disciples as they were giving out it kept multiplying in their hands not only the people who were in the synagogue their hearts were hardened but see what happens there is a second time he is feeding the 4000 which is in chapter 8 the first time he fed the 5000 with five loaves and two fishes the second time he is feeding the 4000 when that happened see what happens verse 13 chapter 8 verse 13 and he left them and getting into the boat again departed to the other side now the disciples had forgotten to take bread and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat then he charged them saying take heed beware of the leaven of the pharisees and leaven of herod and they reasoned among themselves saying it is because we have no bread but jesus being aware of it said to them why do you reason because you have no bread do you not yet perceive nor understand do you not yet perceive nor understand is your heart still hardened having eyes do you not see and having ears do you not hear and do you not remember when i broke the five loaves for the five thousand how many baskets full of fragments did you take they said to him 12 and when i broke the seven for the four thousand and how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up they said seven he said to them how is it that you do not understand how is it that you do not understand understanding is the key and every miracle and encounter is supposed to shape our deepest being of who god is and who we are and if it doesn't shape us that way if it just makes us go wow then the very miracle has lost its purpose we can be amazed uh, beyond measure and be marveled but still miss the point so whatever challenge we are facing right now the previous breakthrough had the answer as small as it is and as disconnected as it is to our current situation what has got loaves got to do with the storm but the body of christ is in a hardened state we are we have got what it takes but since our hearts are hardened see our uh, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and repent the body of christ has to repent repent from what repent from religion 
And when we repent from religion and we know the Father as Jesus knows the Father, kingdom will manifest automatically and it will be effortless. It will be effortless. Life will manifest effortlessly. So, what I am saying is, as much as we are supposed to engage with social service, prayer, this and that, our whole focus has to be in, Father, I want to know you as Jesus knows you. Thank you, Jesus, for your in me, in my darkness, sharing your knowledge with me that I might know you. Why? See, it's simple. Da darkness results in death. Light results in life. What is darkness? A hardened heart. Not knowing him. Not knowing him. That is uh, darkness. And what is Light, knowing him. I will remove the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh that they all shall know me. Right? Heart of flesh. Soft heart. What is this knowing him? This is love. Right? So love, light and life. This is the reality of love, light and life. Darkness, death and not knowing him. See, I, I, I'll show you Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Delivered from darkness into the light. What is the light? The kingdom of the son of his love. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Out of darkness into his marvelous light. What does John 5 say? Verse 24. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Delivered us from darkness into light. As, you know, from death into life. So what, 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 what is missing? This is an accomplished deal. We have been delivered from darkness into light. We have passed from death into life. But why are we not experiencing it? The hardened heart. Not knowing him. It's a relational reality. So it involves our participation. So, we are in the subject of prayer. So what is Paul praying? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give, you to, give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Because they did not understand the loaves. So, a heart to understand. A heart to understand. 
is the need of the hour. That's what we need to pray for. Father, we need a heart that understands your love, that, we, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that we might know you. That's what we need to pray. If we know him, if we allow Jesus to reveal the Father in our darkness, I'm telling you, things will happen so effortlessly and naturally and you will not have the pressure to use that to build ministry. See, we are all praying for one more wave of revival, one more wave of revival. What did we do with the, all the previous waves? What did we do? We built our ministries. We built our ministries. A wave comes and we build a ministry out of it. Sons of God is the only solution. And when I mean sons, I'm not talking about building ministries. I'm talking about sons who know the Father as Jesus knows the Father. Honestly, think about this. When the 5,000 were fed, why didn't Jesus build a ministry out of that crowd? Why did he ask the disciples, go, 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 go? And why is the whole thing about their heart, the heart of the disciples, rather than the 5,000 crowd, you know, trying to bring them all together, teach, 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 teach. Why didn't Jesus think, okay, the more, the larger the crowd we teach to, the better the kingdom will come. I'm all for satellite, I'm all for media, I'm using media. I'm all for those things. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for social service, I'm all for prayer. Do all those things. But I'm telling you, how does the kingdom come? If we get on satellite and reach every home and teach this message, will the kingdom come? The kingdom comes. It has come as Christ in us, who is with his Father and the Spirit. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom. And it grows. And it grows. And it grows. And when we learn to steward our heart, our heart is all that we have in our hands. And when we learn to steward the kingdom within our hearts, it grows, it grows, it grows. And it manifests. And when it manifests, you don't have any pressure to do anything, to build anything. You just empower people. I was just thinking, what will happen if resurrections happen in such a context when mass deaths are happening? If the resurrection happens through one person, then all we get to do is build ministry. But if resurrection happens through every child who knows the Father, then there is no need to build ministry. Everybody in their own location raises the dead. And empower others, introduce them to the Father. And they operate in life. That's the model that Jesus created. It is not a centralized power hub. It is totally decentralized. Where everyone is empowered with the same spirit, with the same access to the Father, because they have the same Christ within them. I don't know how many of you are understanding what I'm saying. As we go through these tough times, we should 
really, really refine our focus of what is the most important thing. As much as we engage ourselves in doing all those things, our heart's cry should be, Father, we want to know you. Reveal yourself in the deepest parts of our being, where our hearts are hardened, where we have not understood your love for us, where we have not understood the loaves. See, a little breakthrough that you might have had in life, that you testified about, might have had the seed for the challenge that you're facing right now. But since we don't allow that incident to shape our heart, since our hearts are hardened, it just went off with a wow factor. So, yeah, uh, I have spoken about this. In fact, the same message I gave a couple of years ago. I'm just repeating the same message. Uh, I'll just show you one last thing. In the book of Matthew, where, where, where the same uh, parable is mentioned, verse 18. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. When he hears it and does not understand it, then he loses it. What is that understanding? Why does Paul pray, prays that, I'm, that we, you might have the spirit of wisdom and understanding? What kind of understanding? Come with me to Amplify it. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets, in the deep and intimate knowledge of him, by having the eyes of your heart. See, instead of the word understanding, he uses the word heart. That the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you may so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and again verse 19 so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe so you might know and understand that is through the heart not through the mind not through the intellect. That kind of knowledge just puffs up. But knowing him is yes? John 17, 3. Knowing him is eternal life. Uh, let me read 17, 3 in Amplified. And this is eternal life. It means to know, to perceive, to recognize, to become acquainted with and understand. To become acquainted with. Acquaintance. Meaning relationship. You know a person through experience. How does it come in uh, passion translation? Eternal life means to know and experience you. As the only true God. And to know and experience Jesus Christ. To know and experience. That is to understand. A knowing experience, that is, that is the need of the hour. When we, when we have a knowing experience of the Father, natural byproduct is life and faith and life. And we are crying out because we do not know Him. If we spend our time crying out that we want to know you more, it will do us all good. So I want you to spend time in prayer asking him that you will know him more. And in knowing him more, you would start seeing things happen so effortlessly around you that the life of God manifesting in and through you. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of him, 
shall be filled in our hearts so that we might know and experience you in a deeper dimension in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you so much for giving uh yes we are reaching out and we are planning our next phase of action of helping out people who are in need uh during this covid um uh, crisis so your generosity really helps do give give all you can engage with such generosity but know that all of this is not the permanent solution yes we can reach out we can help yes yes we need to do it do it we need to do it by all means and we are doing it uh but the permanent solution for this thing is the manifestation of the sons of god and that can happen only when we know the father as jesus knows the father god bless you thank you see you all soon